Planet Lords is a complex medieval strategy city builder with large scale battles. We'll need to raise a strong army to conquer new lands and defend our town, while simultaneously developing our economy through production and trade. As such, we'll need to get off to a good start to overcome the challenges ahead. And it all starts here. Now, before we get started with planning out our town, it can be a good idea to zoom right the way out like this and just see what's nearby. Like, for example, we have these berries right here. Now, you can see that at the moment they're growing, so we, I don't want to worry about harvesting them yet, but we can in the future. We also have things like we've got stone deposits over here and we have a clay deposit here. This stone deposit as well is a rich deposit. So this is very good because eventually we can make a mine there to mine that infinitely. We also have a rich deposit here of wild animals. So that's fantastic. That'll be great food for our hunting. And we have an iron deposit over here. So this just gives us a bit of a feel for the land and where we might want to expand our town. Now on top of that, we have pre-existing roads like this road that's going along here. So this is going to be very useful to get us up towards the stone and the clay, for example. And the road along here, which would be good for the berries heading off in this direction where we can also use it for like the wild animals and stuff. Now, if you press C, you'll bring up these overlays right here. And one of the most important ones early on is to know where the underground water is, which is shown here in blue. The reason we need to know about the underground water is because we're going to need to build a well in order to service our houses in the town. And the well has to be built on top of the underground water. So we basically want to make sure our houses are built somewhere near this water so they can be serviced. On top of that, we can look at the different fertility of the soil in the area. And what we want to do is you see this green stuff here. This is going to be good for farming. So you don't want to build residential plots on top of that because you want to use that for farming later on. Whereas the red and orangey ones up here are not going to be great for farming. So this would be a great place to build houses and other things that basically are not farming materials. Now, one nice feature about this game is that the roads down here are actually free to build. So we can build those and build out a bit of a grid pattern before we get started and it won't actually cost us anything. And this will help us to be a little bit more organized. So what I'm going to do is connect up to this path that I've got here and just build a bit of a grid around my town. So come down here like this and build like almost like a town center sort of area that we can then build off from later on. And when that's all connected up, we can hit the build button and that will automatically build. On top of that, I'm going to make sure I connect up to these points that are in here. So we've got a lot of road access going through here to get to our resources and our central area. Now with that done, I'm looking at where I want to expand to. And basically with the berries that are here and the animals that are here, the food is going to be very useful to us in the early game in order to make sure we survive. So expanding over in this sort of region is going to be good versus expanding over this way when we're actually going further away from those important early resources. So checking the underground water once again, we can see what we've got going on here. And this water actually goes right down next to these animals here. So that's a pretty good location for that. As such, what I want to do is build a road that goes off towards these wild animals and we can start hunting down there and then doing other things in the future. So let's get a road going through here like this and we'll get it coming like around here and then maybe up towards here, just like that, and then build that in there. Now with that done, it'd be great to have a logging camp in the middle of all this because we can start clearing all of this wood here, which we can then build on, but also we can make sure we're getting a lot of wood in that way, which is gonna be very important early on. So that is under the gathering part right here. We need this logging camp and let's see where we wanna place that. Now we can actually place it down wherever we want. You see here though, we have to uproot some trees for construction, but that's not necessarily a terrible thing because we've got a lot of trees in the area anyway. So I'm gonna snap this to this road that we've just built and place it down right there in the heart of the forest and let's start to play the game as well and then this can start to be constructed and that will uh, obviously build over time. Now I want to start thinking about where I want to build my first sort of neighborhood, my residential area. So what I'm going to do is get the road here and we'll connect up to where we've got this road here. So we're getting this sort of grid pattern going on and we'll come off just sort of roughly. We'll come over here like this. Then let's rotate around. Let's come near to this deposit here because that'll be useful later on. So maybe it's just up like this. And then finally we'll reattach back to the road up there yeah, just like that. So let's build that road in place. That's fantastic. And what I'm going to do is inside this area of road we just built, this will be our early residential area. Now, at the moment, obviously, there's a lot of trees covering a lot of the area. But once the logging camp is built, I'll show you guys how you can do this. You can actually choose where they start harvesting trees from. So we'll start to harvest all the trees that are in this area first. Obviously, it's still near the logging camp, so that's going to be good. But then once they're all cleared, that will give us a lot of space to build our houses on. You can also see that in this area, there's not a lot of green. There's a bit of green here for rye, you can see, um, and a bit of green for Emma. But if we come over here, we've got other areas which are much bigger, which are green for these things. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem to build in this area. On top of that, we have underground water, which is here, which can supply sort of over this sort of way. We also have underground water over here, which can supply the houses over here. So we should be fine in terms of the wells to provide water for this whole region. So let's speed things up a little bit and get things uh, getting built, because obviously we need to get ourselves started off here. One thing I think could actually speed things up somewhat is if I build a little road in here as well. So let's construct that because then they can just go across here each time. 
at the moment they come back and they go all the way around like that, which just slows things down a little bit. So obviously the roads, as well as being uh, a good marker for things you want to build in your town, they're also going to speed up the workers as they travel along them. Now, this new message here gives us the first interaction that we can have where we can actually write back and say something if we want to. So there is dialogue in this game between other people. So this right here is Hildebolt von Berenut, for example. So if we hit write back, for example, here, then we have different things we can say. Being early access, some of these are just kind of simplistic, whereas others are are, you know, more in detail and you can drag and drop them over if you want to say something. Now we are actually able to rename our town if we want to. So right here you can see it's currently called Imenruth, I think is how I say it. So if we click on that, it brings up this, which is our technology tree where we can research other things. And I will come on to that later once we've unlocked a tech point. But if we touch the quill up here, then we can rename our town to anything we want. Now at the moment, we're going to go for something very uncreative and call it Kaisenville. Uh, but if you want to suggest names for the town, do so down in the comments. Perhaps we'll rename it in an upcoming episode. And if anyone does a super chat and wants to name the town, then obviously I'll give preference to them. But yeah, we can rename that as we go. And it's a nice feature. On top of that, another customizable thing, you can actually have this right here. I'll zoom in on that on screen, which is a custom banner for your uh, town, your town banner, which is really nice. Um, I'll put a link in the description, which will have some sort of guide to that. Now, I've paused the game because our logging camp over here has been built. So what we need to do, first of all, is assign a family to it by clicking that button there. So that, that's now highlighted white. People will now come and work this. But if we go into the advanced area here, what we can do is we can limit the work area. And if we click that, we get this circle. So from this circle, what we can do then is select an area, like say here, and they'll clear the tree in this area. Now, when they're done with that area, obviously we'll kind of see because it will be clear of trees, but we'll also get a notification that there's nothing workable within the selected area. And at that point, we can then move it. And if we keep doing this, eventually we'll clear this whole area in here for our residential area. Now, let's get started with building some houses because our residential area is going to need to get underway in order that we can have people living in houses. So we're going to build a burgage plot and let's go down here like this and see how we want to do this. So I think one, maybe two like that. Then we'll come up this way. We want to make them quite big and I'll go into why that is. Okay, this would be good if we had a bit more wood because that's all five houses. So let's see, we're on six wood. What I'll do, let's let's actually play the game until we're up to the 10 wood and then I'll build it. The reason you want this to be big is you can actually utilize the backyard area of your houses and make like little vegetable gardens and chicken coops and things like that. And this is going to be very useful throughout the game. So it's something I definitely want to do. Now, what I'm going to do for now is get three people in here working on the timber and basically do that until we've got all the wood that we need to speed things up. If we hover over here, you can see we get an overview of the resources that we have. Now up in the top left here, you have this. So this is your assigned and unassigned families. So here you see we have a population of 10, which show, as it shows there is five level one families. Now at the moment, three of those families are assigned, of course, to the wood cutting and two are unassigned. But we do need the unassigned people because as it says right there, they will work on construction, including guiding the ox to transport timber. So basically they're going to construct things and transport goods which means they are super useful and you don't ever want to get this number to zero because they need to be used in your town. So unassigned isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's just showing you an overview of what your workers are doing. Okay, there we go. We're now up to 11 timbers, which you have more than enough. And then we can go back to the construction of the residential buildings and build the burgage plots. So let's go back to where we were before, come along here like this. And I think it was up to about here. If I can click up to there. And that's going to be four of them. So we need to go just a little bit further this way. So let's do that. So maybe down to there, back up to here. And there we go. So it's a nice little drag and drop feature. And you can see that we've got the houses. So it's five houses. And then out the back, that's the backyard area. So we make them nice and big. So we just as well click that right there and construct them. Now, once these have been constructed, I'll show you guys what we can actually do in terms of the backyards and things like that. Let's play the game. And I'm going to drop the logging camp down to just one family. So we have four families, the maximum amount really, because we do want to keep people getting resources that can come in here and build all of these houses, which will help with our town happiness and things like that. Now, where you build your houses does matter because the commute is an important thing in this game. So if the person in this house is going to work at this logging camp, for example, it's not too bad of a commute. They're just down the road and there they go. But if they're working very far away, this will lower the efficiency. So you do need to consider this in the game. And that's why I like to have these grid patterns and lay things out. I know that all my houses are going to be going around this area. And what I can do then is make sure that anything that's over here in terms of production, that's going to be quite a small commute for people to go to. On top of that, it, within this area that we built for houses, 
in this big circle with the roads. We could put some construction stuff down here and then people also don't have far to go. So definitely worth bearing in mind. Let's get these houses built. I'll speed up until that's done and then show you guys how to do the whole backyard thing. Now we're getting a warning here about our exposed goods. So we need to build a pantry, which is the granary basically, so that food can be stored without it going off and rotting, which is important. Otherwise, you know, we might lose all that food. And same goes for generic storage. So if we go to C right here and, and open up construction, then logistics, I'll build the granary first because that's going to be all of our food supplies. Now in terms of where this goes, basically we're just going to want it to go somewhere kind of central. We've got this obviously grid pattern going on right here. I think what I'll do is I'll place it maybe down here because I'm just thinking there's going to be food coming later on from over there. So we want it to be on this side, but we do want it to be central as well. So I'll place it Maybe if we left click and rotate it around a bit, let's see if we can get it to come in this direction, connecting up to the road here. Okay, it seems to be happiest here, so we're just going to place it down there like that. That's fine. And we're also going to want to build, uh, let's see, one of these right here, which is the storehouse as well. And the storehouse could go there, but I think maybe it's going to have a better spot over here because we've also got, let's see, uh, over here. Here's the mine, isn't it? So let's see if we can get a spot along the road for this one. Yep, there we go. I think I'll just place that one down there. So you want these buildings to be nice and central because resources have to go to and from different buildings. So they come obviously from the buildings where the resources are being harvested, whether that's like wood or stone or whatever. And then they have to go to the buildings that are being constructed. So keeping that central is definitely a good idea. Now we've got a big consideration here because this has gone to red. So we have to see why that is. Now basically it's red because our food is currently only going to last us another two months. As such, we need to make sure that we prioritize getting some more food in, which we can do under the gathering section by building a hunting camp. Now the hunting camp, we want it to be up here really because it's obviously near to uh, this animal section. So uh, let's have a look at how we're going to build this. Now we don't want to build it right in there because it says there that uh, overlaps an animal habitat and will cause migration. So we don't want that. So we want to get it as close to that, but without being in that. So we'll place it down there. Now I'm also going to click on this and put this as a higher priority than anything else. And the reason being is without food, obviously our citizens will starve and die. So that does need to be the main priority to make sure that we don't die. Now on top of that, I'm actually going to set these here to high priority, these two buildings here. So they actually get built before the uh, houses. And the reason for that is the resources we've got are getting drenched. We're getting notifications about that. And they're all going to spoil pretty quickly if we don't get these built in time. And obviously that would be quite a tragedy to lose all of that stuff. And in the meantime, while they're not having the houses, they have these tents to live in. Now, we just got the uh, information here that the uh, this has been built. So let's go ahead and assign one family to do that right there. Now, under advanced, we can limit their work area and we can select them to work up here because obviously this is going to be an area where we have a rich deposit of wild animals, 40 out of 40. Now, the hunting limit is currently set to 10. I'm going to put that up a little bit. Let's go up to 30, right? Because there's 40 animals in here. That'll leave 10 left. And we do want to make sure we leave some and don't deplete all of the animals in the region so they can uh, repopulate the area and we can get more over time. Now, on top of that, you see the berry deposit here is now 64 out of 64. So what I'll do is go under construction and build a forager hut. And let's build that like up here somewhere nice and close, maybe just like there because the berries will be in that region. And let's go ahead and get a road going on here. So from there down to this main road here, that should be fine. Uh, let's put it in there. Now, one thing to say about the berries as well, with the woodcutting hut, the logging camp that we have over here, as I said before, you can select a work area and that can be useful to clear a certain area, but it has another purpose. If these berries were say over here somewhere, we want to make sure that we set the work area to the logging camp so that they don't harvest the berries. It happened to me in a previous game when I was doing some testing where my woodcutters actually harvested some of our berry deposits. So obviously you don't want that to happen. And if you don't tell them to work in areas that are not where the berries are, and those berries happen to be in range of this logging camp, then you will lose them. Okay, our granary has been built and here it is, but it's important that once it's been built, you assign a family to it. If you don't, the goods will not get moved into it. So it's not a passive building, just having the granary, you actually do need people to work it. So now that that's happening, you'll see that they come over here and grab this food supplies from here and move them into the granary where they'll be safe for much longer without spoiling. Now we're getting some requests in for market stalls because certain types of building, the granary, for example, the hunting camp, they want to have market stalls. So what we can do is build one of those up in the center of the town. So let's go into, let's see, residential area right here. And right here we have the marketplace, so we can click that. And this is going to be a bit of a drag and drop. So for now, I think what we can do, 
is come like this and maybe just build it up there. We only need a very small market at this stage. It's something we will expand upon as the game develops. But at this early stage, just having a few little places there where they can sell things will be good enough. So here we go. Our first little market store has been complete. We can see it right here. So this is the marketplace right now. And uh, we just have the one stall, but there are still two stall locations free as well. So people can sell their wares at the market. And that's what this person from this family is doing, the woodcutter right here. So I guess they'll sell their wood and uh, that will give them a bit of an income. So having these market stores will keep people happy. So this is a food store here. So it increases the uh, supply of food and the amount of different types of food. So that's going to help things like your overall approval and basically your town happiness. And basically there's a lot of jobs in this game that require a marketplace uh, and they will do that automatically. So for example, if you have someone working as like a woodcutter and then they want to sell uh, stuff at the marketplace or maybe like you know something food related like a hunter would be a better example. Uh, they will automatically come and make a store at the marketplace provided there is enough space for them. So it's good to have and you want to have it near to your houses. So we've got ours right on the corner here, the houses. And once again, this is where the grid pattern can come uh, in a bit more handy. So that's the market that's uh, up and running, which is very good. As you see, these houses are getting underway. As soon as one of those is built, we'll have a closer look at that and what we can actually do with that. And here we go. Our first burgage plot has been complete. So let's zoom in and have a little better look at this uh, monumental moment for our first house. Let's get in between the trees right here. And here we can see it. So this is the house itself out the front here, connected up to the road, which it does automatically. Then if we go through the back here, this is where we have the back garden. And it's actually quite a sizable back garden. So you can see the house just takes up a small amount of the plot and the garden is a bigger area. So if we click on the burgage plot right here, uh, we can see first of all what's nearby. And this is where we need to build a well, which we'll do very soon because that's currently not ticked as we don't have that nearby. But what we have is this right here, which is the backyard extension. Now, as you can see later on in the game, we're going to have all kinds of different things we could do. But at the start, we have three options available to us, which are a vegetable garden, a chicken coop, or a goat shed. So the goat shed gives us hide, the chicken will give us eggs, and the vegetable garden, well, that gives us vegetables. Now you can see there, there's a bag of silver, which says 15. Now that correlates to this up here, your regional wealth, which is currently at 50. So you can see if we were to build the goat shed, for example, then we'll get the hides and stuff. But 25, that's half of our wealth. That's obviously quite a lot. And I think what we're better off doing at this stage is just building the vegetable garden. Now it's important to note as well that the vegetable garden, the size of the plot actually matters. The bigger it is, the more it will yield. Whereas the goats and the eggs from the chicken, that doesn't matter how big or small it is. So if we've got a smaller plot later on with just a tiny backyard, then we'd be better off, we'd be a bit more efficient to set the small backyard as something where the size doesn't matter, like those goats or eggs. Now, obviously, we're going to run out of uh, money if we did this for all the plots, so we can't do it for all of them at this stage, but it's something we can expand upon over time. It's also completely fine to build houses that don't have this backyard area and are just houses for the sake of being houses, but I thought it'd be good to get this to demonstrate to you guys how we do it, and also it will obviously start to give us some vegetables over over time. Now this again comes into the commute though between where they have to go to work and where they live because they do need time to work these areas and if they don't have enough time then the efficiency of them will go down. Now when the houses are complete you'll see here you get this notification that family members join so the family members will automatically go and take a house. You don't have to worry about assigning them. They do that all by themselves. Okay, so with all the burgage plots complete, we got uh, an increase there in our settlement level. And this has given us a new development point, which we'll come on to in just a second. Let's see what this new message is saying here. So this is telling us that we can actually form a militia. So we can click on uh, that right there. If we go down to here, this is the army button and create new units if we wanted to. Now, the problem we've got at the moment is that we don't have enough people. You see here that we have 10 recruits out of 36. So if I hover over here, you can see there that 10 is the number of men we currently have in the families in the village. So we need to get to 36 men before we can form any of these. What we are able to do, however, is spend our development point. You can see, there we go, we have the uh, small village status. And it also tells us the next settlement level, which is a medium village, is to get two uh, burgage spots level two. We need two of those. <laughs> so two burgage spots level two or higher. Uh, let's click on Kaiserville. It brings up all this. And now you can read all these different things here and choose what it is you want to upgrade. Now I'm going to go for this one, trapping, because we've already got hunters in place. This will enable the hunters to lay traps, which gives us a passive income of meat. Now that's going to be very useful because food is going to be really important early on. So I think that's a good way to start off our tech point. But of course, 
One of the nice things about this game is you can go off in whatever branch that you want. Now, of course, by doing this as well, it does unlock the future potential to do these things as well. So you can also have a look at what they are once you've unlocked them and decide which way you want to go. Okay, our forager hut has now been complete. So let's go up and find that. It was in the forest here. And make sure we add a family into that. We're going to keep at least one free at all times, of course, uh, remembering that we're going to need that. But let's get that one going on and that'll increase our food supply. So that'll be very good. Now, what I'd like to do is build another burgage plot because our approval right there is 47. 7%. Once that goes above 50, we have the potential for new people to join the town. But what we need is the approval over 50, but also a free burgage plot. So the sooner we get on with that, the sooner people will join. So let's go ahead and do that down here somewhere. And let's see where we can do this. So maybe just in here somewhere. Not sure like what the minimum size is going to be. That's too small. So let's see if we can come back this way. And we don't have enough space. Okay, let's see if I can figure this out. Okay, so if we build it like this, we're actually able to get, let's see, two houses in there or potentially three houses. Yeah, if we do it like that, we get three houses. Only one of them will have a backyard and it'll be a small backyard, but not to worry, we'll get that one built up. This will just be useful to us over time and it's still keeping all of our residential areas nice and close to everything else that is central. So I think that's a good place to have it and something for our spare workers to be thinking about in the meantime. And then we'll have the space once one of these is built so that new people can join the town and that'll make us much more productive in the long run. Now I'm noticing here something's dropped to red, so let's see what that is. That's now fuel that is the problem. It's dropped down to two months, so let's take care of that. Under the construction tab, under the gathering section, we have the woodcutter's lodge, and it tells you there that the workers fell nearby trees to produce firewood, and that is our fuel source early on in the game, so we need to make one of these. Now, because they're going to be felling nearby trees, it obviously makes sense that we want to place this somewhere nearby two trees, so I think if I put it here, this might be a good spot for it for now. Nice and central to everything that's going on and near these trees. So let's go ahead and get that one built as the priority. So put that as highest priority above anything else like these houses. This is more of an ongoing longer term project. So we have the storehouse here. So we're going to need to assign someone to this because it's raining and we get this notification that all of our stuff that's over here left out in the open is actually getting soaked. Right now we have seven months worth of food, which is very good. So what I'm going to do is go over to the hunter's hut. Let's go and find that. Okay, here it is. So we're going to take a family off of doing this because we want to keep somebody free. So we don't want to waste that. Then come back through to here. And in the storehouse, we're going to assign that family to doing that job for now. So over time, they'll start to move things. And once we get these new people in the town, then we can have people doing all things at once. Early game, however, it's not a bad idea to do this, to shift people around to different things as and when you need them. Just because somebody is a hunter at the moment doesn't mean they have to be forever. The other thing to keep an eye on is your berry deposit, because once that has gone down to zero, you want to get people away from being foragers because they're not doing anything and you get them doing something more productive, whatever that may be that you need in your town. Now, we've got this right here. This says work area is empty. So if we left click on that, it takes us over to the building, which is the logging camp. So I said we get a notification when we'd exhausted all the trees in this area. So let's just close that a second and come over here. Uh, let's see if we can move that. There we go, just to show you guys a bit better. So if we go to advanced and we go to the limited work area. This is where we had it before. This is all now being cleared. Now it's not immediately obvious that that's all clear, but if we zoom in, you can see right here, it's all small bushes and things like that versus like these bigger trees uh, in this area here. Hopefully you guys see, yeah, like these trees here, that's it. I think it'll be clearer when you're playing the game, you'll sort of know what I mean. So what we're going to do is look at like where it is we want to be expanding to. Obviously, we talked about having an area here uh, that we're going to clear out and then just set that new area by going to advanced, limiting the work area and just clicking on a new area. So that gets rid of the notification. Just keep an eye out for that one if you're doing things the way I am, where you keep setting the work areas because as soon as they are done, then they're not doing any work and you want to make sure you set a new area so that you're being more efficient. Okay, we now have a firewood store in our market as well. So that's gonna be very good to help give our citizens all of the fuel that they're going to need. And a part of the fact that we have the woodcutters lodge here is uh, that we have the firewood store happening as well. Now we do need to get somebody working on the woodcutters lodge, obviously, in order to develop the firewood. So let's see, the berries looks like, yeah, they're still gonna be going for quite a while. So what I might do at this stage is take people out of the uh, pantry for now. We've got a good amount of food stored up, so we should be okay with that for a little while. So take them out of there and put them in there. So I'm doing a lot of chopping and changing early on. If it gets to a point where food is a problem, it's being stored outside and stuff like that, then we'll change it back again. Good news, guys. Our approval has hit 50%. Hopefully that will continue to grow. And we have this burgage plot right here, which is uh, now a free plot that we have to get some new people in. Now, this one here, we are able to have a backyard and it's a very small backyard. So when we look to do something here, 
this is where the chicken coop or the goat shed could be really good for us. Again, I'm going to focus on food, I think, at this stage. And if I build a chicken coop in here, it costs me 25 coins, which will leave me with only 10. However, with the burger spots we have here, what we could do is spend 30 coins and get two vegetable gardens. Now, the game's still very new and we haven't been able to do enough testing yet to know if this is true or not, but I feel like two vegetable gardens are going to provide more food and do more good for the town than the one chicken coop. So that's the decision I'm going to make. It leaves us with just five uh, coins left or five silver, whatever left. So this is something we might need to look at later on. Uh, but for the moment, we're early game, it should be okay and I do want to prioritize the food. As you can see, we're now in May and at this stage, we're doing quite well. We have uh, three months worth of fuel, but that is going to uh, continue to grow until we get to the winter. So we're all right on that. Our approval is above the 50% needed and we have the spare houses. So any minute now, we should hopefully get an expansion with new citizens joining our town. In the meantime, however, let's build that well that we need in order to keep our residents happy. So let's go into the residential area and click on the well. And we've got different water sources around here. So this was the area here that's like kind of near to these houses. But I think it might be better to put it like over here so it's still on the road. So I'm going to get this as close as I can to these houses by building it over here. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll build it like there so it's on the road still. Let's get that built and uh, see whether or not this is in range of all these houses. Hopefully it is. If not, we'll just have to figure something out. So it says there, construction finished for the wells, which is down over here. So now if I click on these houses, let's see, water access. It says any well constructed in the region. Maybe it just takes a second to realize or... No, it doesn't have to have a worker. Okay, let's keep an eye on Oh, there we go. Water access is good. So yeah, I thought it'd be fine because it does say within the region. I assume that meant the region that if we press M and go to map, it means literally anywhere within this region that is currently our lands, which is really nice because we don't have to worry too much about it being really nearby to the houses. So you can kind of disregard what I said at the start of this video. I thought it had to be a little closer than that. Um, but even like the furthest away houses here, they have this. They also have a good food store supply. You can see there, and that makes them very happy. And I just realized the burger spot wasn't showing it had water access when I said that, but it now is, as you can see here. So the last thing that they want as a, an amenity that they desire at this level is for us to build a church. And that's something we can look at building later on. The church does require a worker though. So at the moment, we don't really have the ability to do that as uh, we're still a little bit short on numbers. We're hoping some new people join us very quickly. Now, for some reason, our approval rating actually dropped down a bit. It says it was a homelessness problem, but I don't understand exactly why that is. Uh, because everybody currently has a house, so that's an interesting one. Hopefully that's something that will just sort of go away over time. Uh, and if we keep building amenities and things like that, then obviously that will help out our town. Now, the next thing that I'm going to build is the saw pit right here. This converts the timber into planks, as it says right there. Uh, so where's a good place for this? Maybe just here, actually, because then it's right next to the storeroom and it's on the way back from the logging camp. So that seems like a good place for us to get that one built. As you can see, we have five months of fuel and 14 months of food. So we can actually take people off of doing other jobs and get them doing some of this stuff here, the saw pit. Oh, look at that. We just had some resources stolen by the bandits. I think that's because we don't have an army at the moment. We need to obviously build that up uh, when we're able to do so. But what I'm thinking is we can get people off of the food. So even though the berry deposit is quite high, I don't know if we maybe look to get people off of the berries or something like that because we have so much of it and get people into doing the saw pit to get the planks. The planks are going to be used for some of the buildings that we need in order to progress. For example, the church requires planks. So the sooner that we get to making those, then the quicker we can progress and develop our town further than what we have. The saw pit is complete. And I think at the moment these berries are, I mean, we've got a lot of them and food is important, but I'm just thinking we probably have enough. So I'm tempted to take the family off the berries, but I also feel like someone new is going to join us imminently because we're at 52% right now and we do have enough space for people. So I might just wait a minute and see what happens. Once again, the work area here is empty. So the loggers are doing really well in terms of getting uh, through all of this area that we wanted them to do. Uh, so let's just keep on in the same vein, I suppose, and, and keep them doing stuff that's near to them and in an area that we want to get rid of. So maybe they can do like this area here would be really good. Let's just do that. And we'll just continue doing that, obviously, uh, until we either have enough wood and want to pause and get them doing something else or uh, potentially run out of trees. One thing we can do though as well is, uh, let's see if I can find it, there we go. Yeah, the forest is hot here. As it says there, workers plant new trees in specified zones. So eventually you can have it set up where uh, you're constantly farming trees, you're growing trees and then chopping them down and so on until you have uh, all of your wood completely automated. Now I've waited quite a while, but what I think I'm going to do is finally go up to the uh, forager's hut right here and take these people off of doing the foraging and put them on to doing this right here in the saw pit so that we can start getting some of these uh, planks made up. As I say, we've got so much food here, 16 months worth at the moment. We don't really need people to be picking berries. And if a new family joins, we can always get them to do that if we wish. 
But in the meantime, I'd much rather get on with the saw pit. So chopping and changing people around a little bit is a good way to keep the efficiency high. And uh, oh, yes, we just got a new family. Literally just as I was talking there, a family uh, joined us. So we can see here, we're now up to six level one families, which is 12 men and five women. Now, interestingly, it doesn't seem to have taken our food amount down. You'd think because there's a new family, maybe we wouldn't have 14 months anymore, but it does seem to still be at that. So that's actually pretty good. Now, we've just hit 20 planks, as we can see here. So I'm actually going to build the church now, sort of saving up for that. So under residential, just over here, we have the wooden church. It's quite a big building, so we're going to need to figure out where exactly we're going to put it. So let's do that. Uh, but this will be a very useful building for us to have. I actually think going quite central with it sort of makes sense. We can maybe put Put it in here somewhere like yeah let's put it down in there so let's play that um and this is one of the amenities that the level one burger spots uh, would like as you can see right here so by doing that it should help with our approval rating and the better that is the more people will join the town and the more people we have the more efficient we can be with getting all the resources and stuff that we need in order to continue expanding so let's get that one built up we'll see how that looks we'll get the people working in there as you can see, we do have two spare families at the moment, so then that would just go down to one when someone is working in the church. And we're managing to maintain things quite nicely at this stage. As you can see, it's currently the middle of July and it's pouring with rain, so we've got a lovely British summer here as we are playing through. But uh, nonetheless, the, the work is going on. The church is almost halfway there. And our approval is at 57 already, and that's without the church even being built. So I'm pretty confident that our town is in a really good place at the moment and it's growing the way it should be. Uh, but let's hope I haven't spoken too soon. Um, but it seems like we're going pretty good. And a new family has just moved in and housed themselves. So there we go. We currently now have seven families, which is fantastic. Um, so this is almost done. We'll assign someone to that and then we'll figure out the rest. So here it is, guys, the beautiful level one church there. Or I say level one church. I'm not actually sure if there are levels to it, but the wooden church there all barricaded off looking good. One cool thing with it is you can actually choose the church bell sound here like that or this one. Or well, that one, <laughs> so you have options, which is quite funny. Anyway, never mind that. Let's assign a family member into that church. That'll be great for the people uh, to have a, a, a functioning church in their land. We see here the vegetable gardens are getting underway as well, so that's very good. The fact we're actually able to grow all these vegetables, that will help us with uh, food and stuff as well. It's probably helping with the overall approval rating because you see there, the uh, market food variety is something that they're enjoying. Now that might go down a little bit in the fact that we don't have the berries anymore, uh, but it's something we can work on over time. And now you can see that uh, another amenity has been met. We have the church level right here. We're not yet at the stage of getting the clothing store and stuff, but certainly we're making improvements as we go along. So at this stage, I wanna go back to the forager hut and add a family in there just to get the rest of these berries while we can, as they are seasonal. Um, our food has now started to drop. We're down to just 10 months. It's still pretty good, I think. You know, it's almost a year's worth of food that we've got in advance. But if we are able to store it without it going off in the granary and stuff like that, then I think we just as well get that happening. I have to say, I do really like the graphics in this game as well. The town feels very vibrant, very alive with all the people getting on with their little stuff. And I think this has been a really nice starting episode. If you'd like to see more Man of Lords videos, then please do subscribe and watch episode two by clicking the video on screen now.